is 200 yards from the river. Now, typically when they give you distances like that, they're talking about direct perpendicular distance. Um, so for whatever reason, when I read this problem, I see the river going uh, up and down on my paper. If you want to have your river going the other way, it's fine. It really doesn't matter, but that's just the visual image that pops into my head. Um, and so the person initially begins 200 yards, and again, that is a perpendicular distance here. This is where our person begins, and if y'all have had me before, you know I'm not an artist. That is Coach Miller's job, so stick people is about as good as it gets. I do attempt to draw an airplane, and it gets real comical. Um, that'll come up in a couple of days. Um, so instead of walking directly to the river, instead of walking directly to the river along that 200-yard path right there, the person walks 400 yards along a straight path to the river's edge. So, hmm? yeah, well, you know, maybe it's a scenic route. Maybe he can't walk directly to the river. Maybe there's like a huge tree in the way or boulders or something. I don't know. Get creative. A mountain sounds good. I wouldn't walk in the path of a mountain lion either. Um, of course, I wouldn't be walking if I could see a mountain lion anywhere near me either. So, you know. Um, instead, the person walks 400 yards to get to the edge of the river. And we're going to assume that is in a straight line. Okay, obviously, it's probably not, but simplifying the problem here. It says, find the angle to the nearest tenth of a degree between this path and the river's edge. So what we're really looking for is this angle right here. So in relation to that angle and the way that our right triangle is set up, the 200 is opposite, the 400 is the hypotenuse, so we are going to use which trig function? Sine. And yes, we are going to use the inverse because we are looking for a uh, angle. We're not looking for one of the sides. So we are going to use the inverse. Theta is equal to the sine inverse of, oh, isn't that convenient? 200 over 400 reduces to 1 half. Um, make sure that your calculator is in degree mode in case someone in one of my other classes reset it. Sine inverse, you didn't have to simplify it. Okay, I just do when I see things like that. Um, so theta is equal to 30 degrees. Now, to be honest, a lot of the answers that you're going to get on here are not just nice whole numbers. Okay, a lot of them you're going to have to round. Um, but this one does turn out to be a whole number. We don't have to round to the nearest tenth of a degree. We good? Let's look at example two. A surveyor is 100 meters from a building. He finds that the angle of elevation to the top of the building is 23 degrees. If the surveyor's eye level is 1.55 meters above the ground, what is the height of the building to the nearest meter? So let's set up this problem. We have a building. <coughs> Yes, I drew a very skinny building. Um, the surveyor is standing over here 100 meters away. He finds that the angle of elevation to the top of the building is 23 degrees, but they give us this extra little detail right here. His eye level is 1.55 meters uh, from the ground. So what that's saying is our triangle is not actually with the ground. It has to do with the surveyor's eye level. So that's going to become a part of our calculations here. So angle of elevation is always made with the horizontal. Okay, 23 degrees here. It's always with the horizontal. It's not the ground in this case, but it's still that horizontal line down there. And that 100 meters that I drew down there, we can slide up to the triangle. Okay, it's still the same distance. His eyes are still 100 meters from uh, the building, just like his feet are, or at least we're assuming that he's not 
standing at some odd angle. Okay, uh, we want to know the height of the building, but notice the height of the building is not that entire, or it's more than this, the that side right there. It's more than that side right there. So um, I'm going to label that with a different variable because that's not our ultimate answer here. So with the information we're given, what I labeled as X would be the opposite. The 100 would be the adjacent. So that means which trig function are we using? Tangent. This time we're given the angle. We're looking for one of the sides. This is the easier scenario. We just multiply both sides by 100. 100 tangent of 23. 42.447. That's approximately x, but that is not the entire height. What do we need to add to that to get the height? The 1.55 meters, the height of the man, plus that x value right there will give us the entire height of the building. So I'm just going to add 1.55 to my answer and it asks us to the nearest meter so we can round that up to 44. The height is approximately 44 meters. Now please, please, please always remember to look at what they want you to round to and make sure that you include units as well. Okay, always make sure that you do that. <coughs> All right, uh, last example we're going to do today, together. Um, well, I do have one more, but for right now. A six foot tall man flies a kite 354 feet in the air when he runs out of strength. The angle of depression from the kite to the man is 34 degrees how much string did he have? Okay, so let's set up our scenario here. I have a six foot tall man flying a kite. He's securing his masculinity. Let me draw his arm longer so that his arm is like at the top of his head. His arm is not broken. I just can't draw very well. Okay, here we go. Struggles real, guys. I'm sorry. So the kite is 354 feet into the air. I can handle a kite. Now, 354 feet, that would be measured all the way to the ground, would it not? Well, it says that it's 354 feet in the air, so it's talking about that perpendicular distance with the ground because the question is how much string did he have that's the distance to his hand okay um let's see here so that's what we're actually solving for is this distance right here this is what we want so hopefully you can see the triangle forming here Here's another scenario where we have to take into consideration a height of this person. Um, so that 354 there is that entire distance, but it's not the distance on the triangle. What do we need to do to get the distance on the triangle there? Subtract the 6. So that side for the triangle is really 348. Go over that with the blue so you can see that there, the distinction. Okay, now, yes ma'am? Um, you have to subtract at this point because if you use 354, um, that's not going to be, that would be this bigger triangle. Okay, 
Now, we do need another piece of information here. We're dealing with a triangle. Either we need another side or we need an angle in the triangle. We're not given any more information about sides, but we are given an angle right here. So the angle of depression. Okay, the angle of depression. Now, we've only looked at examples with angles of elevation. So let me show you something here. The angle of depression is technically, if we have a horizontal floating up here in the air, this is the angle of depression. Okay, this is 34 degrees right here. But if you think about your properties of parallel lines, that horizontal at the top is parallel to the horizontal on the bottom, and our red line right here is actually a transversal. So does anybody remember what these angles were called right here? Opposite interior or alternate interior. What do we know about those angles? They're, they're equal. They're congruent. They are equal. So, turns out the angle of depression and the angle of elevation are the same thing. Okay? They are the same thing. And I know that's kind of weird to think about um, that they have two different names. They're in two different places, but they are the same thing. They really truly are. Okay? So, if you see angle of depression, think of it just like you would the angle of elevation. Horizontal, and you're going up through the horizontal. Okay, so now we have an angle. We are trying to find the hypotenuse. We have the opposite. So we're going to use sine again. So the sine of 34 is equal to the opposite, 348 over the hypotenuse, which is what we're looking for. This is the case, bless you. And these two things switch places, so H is equal to 348 over the sine of 34. It's not a very mathematically accurate way of expressing it, but uh, we don't really use arrows much, but it works, right? So the length of the string here is approximately 622.325. And we were not told what to round to, so I'm just going to leave it like that. <laughs>